What's up guys, I'm Jonathan Raspberry and welcome to a new video today. We're gonna, I'm really excited to be bringing you a very awesome game. It's between two 2400s. Um, white is Matthias Thessing, I guess. And it's black is Lucien Philip. And basically the idea is we're going to be looking at how black uses incredible peace collaboration. Um, he, his, his game flows with the, um, what, what white gives him. Um, basically, um, black starts on the queen side, uh, this is a type of a Sicilian, and then white gives him a chance to attack on the king side, and he uses a very beautiful, uh, it's about a 20 move combination, well not combination, but 20 moves of preparation for a king side attack, that when it's launched, um, it traps the rook eventually, and he goes up in exchange, and then from that point on, he's just completely winning. So it's a really cool, really cool game. Um, please stick around and enjoy. Okay, guys, so um, we're not going to really be focusing too much on the opening because it's a theoretical line uh, from the Sicilian, um, but I'm not, not the greatest expert on Sicilian. Um, however, I will point out a couple of things to you. This is a... Um, a uh, it basically turns into a, uh, a Schwittingen Sicilian. Uh, after c takes d5, knight takes d5, knight c3. It hasn't quite gone there yet. It's just an e6 Sicilian, um, which... Most of the time means um, Black's not going to be playing g6, not going to be playing a dragon, but he's still got uh, flexibility to play a6 and d5, possibly uh, e6 and e5, Well, though that does lose a move, uh, as opposed to like an immediate e5. Um, so White plays knight c3, queen c7, um, which is not the most accurate of moves, um, because of course the knights can come to can come to b5 immediately, but uh, White decided to play uh, g3, so he's going he's gonna to place his bishop on the... Uh, on the uh, King side. So after Bishop G two, he's got this. He's got this fun little bishop. He's you know playing over here on the the A one H A diagonal. Um, in case Black Castle's Queen side, not gonna happen. But you know it's it's a good defensive structure, I guess. Um, the Bishop in the pawns is probably the second best defensive structure, depending on what type of attack you're facing. Um, because it's it's you know it has holes it has light square holes but it's got a bishop to fill up those holes nice and neatly as opposed to, to a h2 g2 and f2 pawn structure like here and bishop comes out in castles uh, normally here actually um, the bishop will come out to maybe uh, uh, e3 or, or sorry e2 or e3 um, but also of course you know you've got you got plenty of other lines uh, g3 third most popular move a6 bishop g2 knight f6 um, here, uh, white castles, knight takes d4, queen takes d4, queen c5. Now take a moment here, uh, we are playing black, but ask yourself, what would you do? Uh, you're still technically in theory, but you probably don't know these lines. Uh, what would you do? Um, your queen's being attacked. Uh, seems like there's only uh, uh, two logical squares to go to. Um, possibly a4 uh, or d3, and neither of those are right correct move here, according to both the engines and theory, is bishop f4. You know, uh, he's attacking your queen, you might as well attack his queen first, right? Now, you're not afraid of uh, e5, because after bishop takes e5, you're in the same position on the pawn. So, if, um, if bishop captures on uh, d4, after bishop takes c7, you may be a little bit afraid of bishop takes c3, um, which is, you know, logical, but the problem here is while you have a weaker pawn structure, you've got you've got two pawns on an open file, you know that are um, doubled and isolated. The problem here is you've got two bishops. You've got control of the center of the board. You have much more activity. And look at this little entombed piece here on uh, c8. The rook on a8 is also not pretty. So um, it's a pretty good position. Computer says 0.71 pawn advantage. So um, uh, we got. Uh, uh, the theoretical move d6, or in a Schwinnigan. I, I assume this is a Schwinnigan. It's got the e6, d6 pawn structure. Not an expert, as I said, on Schwinnigan structures. Um, so, queen d3 is played, which is the more natural move. Queen uh, c4 loses to bishop to f2. 
and queen a4 puts the queen out of play. Queen d2 is another possibility. Of course, queen d1 locks the a1 rook out of play. But queen d3 is a good position. Um, and here, knight to d7, which um, we're still in theory. Oh, about 13 games have been played in this position, and I kind of like this idea. Um, basically, the idea is he wants to bring his knight here um, to uh, b6 or c5, uh, play e5, and take pretty good control of the center this way, as opposed to, say, leaving his bishop here and going, or leaving his knight there and going for an eventual d5. Um, so, I kind of like this plan. Again, the, the, the c5 square looks pretty juicy, so, um, there's a plan. Knight, knight to a4 was played. Um, again, t um, pause the video if you want for one second, ask yourself, what would you do in this position? Um, your bishop is being attacked. But do you see the other threat? Take a moment and see if you can spot it. Um, basically, the idea here is you've got uh, bishop takes d6 on tap. Uh, believe it or not, after, of course, knight takes d5, or c5, you got queen takes c5, um, and then queen takes d6, or bishop takes d6, or whatever you choose. Of course, that's a threat, and of course, if you play bishop a7, d6 pawns hanging. Um, so, what do you do? e5. A very strong move. If you play knight takes c4, um, then you're losing. because, Or if he plays that, you go knight c5, tagging your queen and your bishop. So you don't have to worry about him taking your bishop. Um, taking here, of course, is completely pointless because you take back and you're still defending your, your bishop. Uh, so he's got to move his bishop. You go to e3. e3 was actually, when I was going through this game, to be honest with you, the move that I thought was pretty interesting. Um... Even though it forces the doubling of your pawns, you you um, you will be opening up the, the rook file, but it's not the best move here. Uh, according to the computers, actually, bishop c1, um, but the move played here, bishop d2, is the second best option, and it's, it's the move that any human would play. Um, so bishop to d2. Uh, in here, um, what was played? What was played? Bishop to d4. Now... Bishop to d4 is an incredibly strong move. It looks like a very bad move. Like, come on, just c3. You're going to kick the, you're gonna kick the bishop, you're going to lose a move, you're going to have a weak d6 pawn. But it's not as simple as that. Take a look at the position for a second after c3. Bishop to a7. And this knight is looking awful. Um, the position is okay, but um, uh, it, it's... It's not one that you would uh, want to play with your knight because your knight currently is trapped. You got to play something like b3, um, and now the computer's already given black a very, very small edge uh, from time to time. Sometimes it's even, it's basically even. Um, white generally doesn't want to be even out of the open. Um, so, by the way, bishop d4 was the first novelty. I assume it's a novelty. It's just not my uh, my database. Um, bishop to d4 as opposed to, say, bishop to a7. It's a very good move. Um, and this begins the theme for today, peace collaboration. Um, and really a secondary, a secondary topic is uh, calculation. Uh, black knew why he would not play c3, or if he did, he would be perfectly okay with it. Um, but you'll see a lot of times in this game where black plays, um, moves that look risky. And to some extent they are, but white can or black calculates his way out of them and not being a grand master um uh, which i would assume 99.9% .9 of you are not um you don't need to go on gut feelings in a long game now in a short game yeah sometimes you have to kind of go on gut feelings from time to time as opposed to calculation but when you have the time calculate it out you may be right about your gut feelings you know i kind of think bishop to d4 is a good move but you really need to, you know, ask yourself, okay, why? Well, what happens if, what happens if bishop to c3? You know, what happens if knight to c3? What happens if c3? What happens if he plays this king to h1 and play f4? And try to undermine the bishop that way. Gotta ask yourself these questions. Um, and black did so. The bishop is excellently placed. So this is just the beginning of the game. Let's go over it real quickly. Um, how black turned this position into a very good position for him. So bishop to d4, knight to c3, um, the point is now knight to d5, of course, uh, or knight to e2. Um, knight to d5 immediately, but also knight e2 um, to eventually play c3, and uh, with black's next move of knight to b6, um, maybe a knight e2 is on tap.
Of course, the B pawn is hanging right now, so that's not an option. But that is an eventual idea. He wants to move his knight, and then he wants to play c3 and trap your bishop. Um, after, you know, bishop to c5, b4 traps the piece. So knight to b6, um, you might have looked in this position uh, and asked yourself, well, why, why not knight c5? Um, knight c5 attacks the queen. How bad could it be? After the queen moves, I can move the knight to e6 if I so desire. I can play bishop to e6 if I need to. You know, well, the question, the, 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 the problem here is you're assuming that uh, the queen is going to move, which is a decent assumption to some extent, but it's not really a very good assumption because <gasps> he attacks your queen, and you're very upset because if you take his queen, he'll take your queen, um, which makes you mad, but then you realize you're being forked, which makes you even madder, um, and you're not forking anything, so you're sad, so you're mad and you're sad, which is not a good, you know, position to be in. So after 95, queen to d8 is forced, and then after queen to e2, just moving the queen, you know, queen f3 also, I believe, would have worked, you know, perfectly fine, queen to e2, and then, well, c3 is on tap, so you gotta play, like, knight e6, or knight anywhere, really, for that matter, c3, um, bishop a7, and, uh, raise your hand if you want to be on black's side, mm, you shouldn't raise your hand, um, I mean, look at this, you've got a bad bishop on a7, well, the bishop on a6, a7 is okay, you got, you got a knight on on e6 that's, you know, attacking nothing. You've got a queen doing nothing. you got a bishop doing nothing. you got a rook doing nothing. You're not castle. you got a pawn backwards on d6. Fun. For white. So, not gonna happen. Going back, the move knight b6. Move that, when I was going through the position, I actually didn't think about too much. I was like, wow, that's a, that's a good move. Um, knight to b6 prepares to actually go to c4. It also defends c5, so it's a very strong uh, move on both sides. So, okay, rook ad1 was played. Um, point is, if knight to g4, um, then... Whoa, sorry about that, guys. Um, if knight to d4 happens, then you... Uh, or, sorry, knight to c4, um, all else being equal, of course, you can play knight d5. Wow, um, sorry about that. Uh, you can play bishop c1, and your rook's not trapped. So, um, right, the trap behind the bishop. So, um, that's not a useful move. Bishop to g4 was played. Very strong move. The idea is I want to play bishop to e6, right? Natural score for my piece. Bishop to f3 doesn't look particularly tasty because f, uh, bishop to g4, because f3 is going to happen, um, at some point, or even h3 for that matter. Um, and I'm going to castle king's side, so, you know, provoking h3 isn't particularly, you know, um, amazing. But why bishop g4? Well, it's because it misplaces a piece. The bishop on g2 is is, is as well placed as it can be right now. Um, f3 is obviously not possible. Either you make that rook move back to e1 or c1 or b1 or a1. Or, because knight e2 is not possible because of the b2 pawn hanging. Or bishop f3, which is what was played. And then bishop to e6. So now, what have you gained? Well, not that much. But h3 is now available with tempo. Uh, the bishop is particularly useless on, on f3. Um, h3 is not really ever going to be possible uh, until the king moves up to g2, or the bishop comes back. So it's a good move, all in all. Um, so, b3 was played as white. Um, I'm not going to really pay too much attention to his moves, just, you know, kind of uh, playing to uh, blunt the pressure by the bishop, and also... Um, get get rid of the b2 weakness. Now, of course, now you have a fresh new weakness link weak, weakness link on c2 to play with, but um, that's not going to really be that big of a deal uh, to play. Uh, rook c8 is a, is is possible. It's not the best move, but what Black chose to play here was he said, "My knight is done. Okay, my knight has done its work. It's time to go to the king side." Now, this takes a very um, this takes a hard look at the position because you're allowing knight to d5. The knight's, first off, not pinned. Second off, the knight can come to d5, and you can't take it with the knight. You have to give up a bishop for that knight if you're going to get rid of it. And if you don't get rid of it, you've given the knight a really nice place to sit, uh, where he's going to sit for a long time. Um, but the point here was Black saw that he calculated that after bishop takes knight, pawn takes knight, f5 would eventually occur. And... Um, the point is, his pieces are very well placed for kingside attack. Check out this awesome dragon um, on 
you know, on, on the, the, the G1 A7 diagonal, as opposed to, well, he's actually on both diagonals, but this is, this is going to stay close for a while, um, also on the long diagonal. But, uh, you know, this bishop has, has basically turned into a dragon piece. You will see how dominant it is later. But um, that piece is well, is well suited for the attack. Um, well, let's go ahead and play a couple more moves here. Pontex, Pontex. He went ahead and played knight c5. Not his, not his only option by any means. He, he'd be fine playing some other moves, but knight d5. Um, now castle. You've got a rook prepared after f5 to come to f6. Your queen is not the best place, but you can move it. Your knight is not the best place, but you can move it. But you have control of the center of the board. You have uh, you don't have the two bishops, but the position is closed, so that's not bad. Um, sorry, let's 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 move on and see uh, what is going on. We got c4 playing, obviously natural move, but possibly a threat in the position is b4. The greatest attackers always always ask themselves, what is my opponent's threat? In this case, b4. And then bishop to c3 is pretty annoying. It's going to actually force the bishop on back to a7, which eventually c5 could completely blunt the bishop from the attack. So what, did you, what do you play if you see uh, b4 on tap? Well, f5 first. Ah, wow, messed that up. So, um, yes, f5. Um, technically, uh, f5 and a5, which is the move I was thinking was about to be played, are about even, according to the computer, f5. Actually, a little better, just a little. Uh, number one choice for white is b4. Um, um, uh, the move that was played was not a top move, bishop to e2 by any means. Uh, and then played a5, so my bad. Um, a5 was the idea. Maybe play first, maybe not, I don't know. Um, f5 was played, though, of course, natural. Uh, got ahead of myself there, and now, of course, you've got the c5 square, which is really nice for your bishop. Uh, is a5 going to be weakness? Yes, it's going to be weakness. So you're going to play b6 eventually. You don't have to do it now. You've got to rook on a1, so you don't have to worry about that for a little while. Uh, a5, king, g2. Natural. Uh, trying to control some of the weak squares. Queen to d8, preparing a queen maneuver to the king's side. By the way, we've started the 20 move uh, piece rearrangement ever since f5. Okay, this is a long, slow attack. It's hard to see the attack coming, but it's coming. Check it out. So F3, okay, uh, uh, trying to stop like a knight F6 to G4 or E4, natural. Queen to F6, uh, queen to B1, B6, just a little solid defensive move. A3 was played, um, then rook to A7. A7 is a really strong square uh, for multiple reasons. One, if B4 actually occurs now, then um, pawn takes, pawn takes, um, if he plays bishop takes, possibly bishop to c5. But the point is you have this, let's switch, let's switch sides again. My opponent gave me the king side, now he's going to give me the queen side. Um, so this is really good uh, if he wants to ever double rooks on the a file, if he wants to double rooks on the f file, he'll move his knight eventually. Um, or possibly come to g7 or h7, which is what he will eventually do with this rook. It's, it's a move, maneuver that's been played quite a few times before, so um, not necessarily in this exact position, but playing rook to a7 early in an attack has been proven very useful. So rook to a7, a good move by um, our friend Lucian. Bishop to d3, of course, just you know trying to keep the pressure up. Queen to f7. The point is he wants to come over here to the h5 square. He wants to play f4, but he wants to play it at the right time. Um, okay. Uh, he wants to play it at the right time. Uh, so he wants to play queen to h5, follow, in up, follow it up by h4. You can't really play uh, in this position. You can't really play f4 in this position because of... Oops, she takes to h7. And ouch pants, all of a sudden you're much, much much worse. So, queen to f7, a brilliant move, preparing queen h5, and then playing f4, you're controlling the h7 square, and then you can move your queen to h4 after that. So, I mean, there's nothing to worry about. You're not, he's not threatening f4 by any stretch of the imagination. If he plays f4 at this point, um, e4 is absolutely solid. Why? Because you're closing down the position, you're attacking the bishop, the bishop's got to go backwards. Check out this nice piece on d2, check out this awesome piece on c2. Not. Check out this sweet bishop on, on, on d4. Um, 
queen, the rooks, they look poised to jump in. Why? Because they are. So, um, uh, not really threatening to play f4 by any stretch of the imagination. Bishop to c1 was played. Uh, queen h5. Bishop to b2. Now remember, we secured the c5 square for our piece. Look how strong our bishop is. It's controlling f2, because he wants to double rook, and g1, which will come into play much later, as you shall see. So, really good play so far um, from black. And as I said, I absolutely love this game. It, it taught me a lot. I studied it for at least at least two hours, uh, which for me is kind of a long time to study one game. Um, uh, I know I know some grandmasters. They study games for a lot longer than that. But, um, you know, I don't have that much time. So I, I, it, was, it was a two-hour sit-down for me, and I think I really learned a lot from this game. Queen c2. Uh, f4. Ah, look. Fh7 is defended. How nice. Uh, g4 is played. Uh, obviously, he doesn't really want to open it up. Open up the position. G4. Queen h4. Now he can't play h4, h5, which would be a little bit more solid. It would, it would allow me to play g6 and open up the position if he got in h5, but then his rooks could come and start uh, annoying me on the h file. So I'm not allowing the h-pawn to get rolling. Bishop to f5. Um, the knight is defended because there's a there's a little tower on h7 that's dominating life. Well, he's not really dominating life, he's just dominating this bishop. Um, bishop d6 check is completely normal. Uh, possible, just just king of eight apparently here. I, I would I would just play king h8 followed by knight to f8. I'll kick that bishop out and you're doing just fine. You'll see that eventually he plays knight to f8. Anyway, actually next move. After king to h1, which computer best move, uh, knight to f8, defends uh, the e6 square, prepares maybe an eventual g6, maybe a rook h6, then g6, um, so a good move. Um, also, h7. Uh, Black's plan here is to play h5, and as soon as he plays h5, bishop to h7 can be a little annoying, um, so this defends that square as well. But anyway, rook to d2 was played. Okay, so after rook to d2, um, white goes ahead and plays h black goes ahead and plays h5. Was g6 a little bit more accurate? Probably was. Um, just to kind of kick that bishop out, um, not give him any options. Probably a little bit more accurate uh, as opposed to the immediate h5, but it wasn't bad. Rook to g2, of course, was played. Notice, notice that nice little bishop over there on. Uh, on c5, defending g1 and f2. So, pawn takes g4, rook takes g4. You're saying, whoa, 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 Letting a rook come on an open file. He's got a bishop, he's got a queen, he's got a rook, he's got another rook, he's got a bishop. Well, that bishop's never going to do anything. You're letting him open up a file. He's got a dominating presence on that file, and you're letting him have that file? Absolutely. Freaking lootly, that's for sure. Why? Because Black calculated that he could get away with it. He calculated he could at some point play g5, uh, completely shutting down um, Black from that uh, file, and then bring his rooks to the h file, which he has a dominating presence on. So let's see how it goes. Queen h5, bishop to e6, or sorry, e4, g6. Uh, Decent move. Uh, now, I will say here the computer is is favoring white in this position. And I personally believe it was because of a little bit of a mistake with not playing g6 a little bit earlier. I feel like h5 might have been a little rushed. Um, but still, it's really hard to play this position as white. Um, Queen g2, not throwing away his advantage too badly. About 0.6 advantage for white. Um, but... All of a sudden, the, the evaluation is changing down to about 0 0.5, 0 0.55, not bad. A rook to a1, pretty useless move. That 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 move throws away his advantage. Just goes to show you that you, you got to play actively um, in positions. Playing passively uh, almost always will kill you unless your opponent is a little overzealous, maybe. Uh, it'd be maybe a good time just to kind of sit back and wait. But rook a1 is a, is a turd. So now g5, defending, defending his uh, g-pawn. Rook to a2. Now good move again. 
he's he's preparing to move his bishop in to have his rook on uh, on a long file, uh, I guess. I don't know. Um, knight to d7. Uh, now knight to d7 is actually a very important move. Um, if I if I had played rook to h6 immediately, um, well besides the possibility of 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 of, um, of bishop to a4, you know you can go ahead and actually play bishop to f5. And the point is now my knight can't actually get to d7. Uh, and with the rook on f6 and my knight to d7, he can't play bishop f5 and chase my knight away. I don't want to trade bishop for knight in this position because my knight's going to be a very big attacking piece. b4. Okay, so attacking my bishop. Do we get rid of our amazing bishop? No. Bishop b3. Obvious move. Only move. Look how dominant that bishop is. He's controlling g1 and f2, two critical squares for the defense. There's no rook g. There's no rook a1 g1. There's no queen g1. There's no queen f2. You know, if he wants to try to triple on the g file or something and still defend like the g1 square, that bishop is rocking the world right now. Now, could he play bishop to c1? No, because there's no piece on the first rank, and time is running out. Bishop to c3 could be preparing bishop to d2. Rook to a6 was played. Bishop f5, pretty serious mistake, um, though the position was already pretty bad for him, pretty hopeless. Knight f6 was played. Um, if you had seen White's awesome plan, Black's awesome plan of trapping the rook, did you notice that? Did you notice the rook was trapped? The rook is trapped on, on g4. Um, so if you had noticed that awesome plan, you might have been thinking to yourself, hmm, let's play queen e2. Queen e2 defends the h file from rook h6 and prepares rook to g2. Seems natural, but rook to h6. Sorry, knight to, knight to g2. Wait, what? What's going on here? Bishop c3? Uh, no, no, sorry. After rook h6, I'm not playing bishop c3. Queen e2 might have been okay at that position. Now, playing this position, variation. Uh, queen two, knight f six, rook g two. Now, of course, you're preparing bishop to, to d two to trade off bishops. You should be perfectly fine, right? Well, no, because of of knight captures e four, pawn takes e four, and f three. What? What? No, 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 no. Positions, positions off, positions off. G four. Sorry, g four first. Uh, g four, and you're threatening the fork, and you're also kind of threatening. Uh, to play, even if it wasn't a fork, f3 and then f2. So, position is hopeless, almost. Almost hopeless. And it, I haven't been saying, you know, he's he's attacking, he's attacking, he's attacking. He's been building up this entire time. It's, it was an extremely, extremely good build. Uh, he's finally brought all his pieces over to the king side after this, after this knight to f6 move. You have the culmination of the attack. You brought all your pieces over, and look what you get. You net an exchange. 20 moves for an exchange, you say? Against international masters, grandmasters, that is a really, really nice catch. If you told me, Jonathan, play this line, and in 20 moves, you will have an exchange. I would be like, what? I'll do that. Of course I'll do that. Why wouldn't I do that? It's an exchange. You know, it's not it's not completely winning, but it's it's better than not having anything at all, and it uh, gives you very good winning chances. So, he takes a five, knight takes. Here, of course, your threatening knight uh, takes pawn, followed by queen takes pawn, queen f3. So, he has to take back. I go queen to e1. He could, he, could, he could take here, I guess, if he wanted to. Um, but he decided just to go with rook to, b, uh, rook to b2. Not the greatest move of all time. a5, a4 also does not win the best move of all time awards. Queen takes a4. Uh, it wasn't a horrible move, though. Queen one being a threat, rook to b8. Now, this is another point. a4. Can he take the pawn? If I take the pawn, he's going to play rook b8 check, then king h7. Then he's going to play rook b7 check, then after I move back, and he's going to check me and check me and check me. I can't ever come over here to attack the rook because my rook on g2 is hanging. What do I do? Well, if rook b7, you got rook f6. I mean, king f6. It's important to notice these things. It's the only reason why. Only reason why you can't go to h7. Only reason why you can take on a4. So bishop c3. Or sorry, bishop c2. Queen c4, uh, just munching, munching, munching. Uh, uh, the threat here was bishop, you know, it was queen to d1. Very serious threat. He had to, 
he had to uh, acknowledge that. Queen takes c4, bishop takes a5. Now you might be telling me, okay, well, you know, there, there's no queenside pawns. You have one extra pawn in exchange. Is that going to be enough? Generally speaking, in an endgame where there's pawns on one side, a bishop or a knight can have good chances to draw. But down a pawn, all you got to do is trade rook for knight and you're down a pawn in a king pawn endgame, which is almost always completely toast. Queen a6, not bad. Bishop c3. Uh, rook g8, trading the only active rook, bishop to f5, queen c4, bishop b1, uh, king g7, h3, not really the best move of all times, uh, he hasn't really been playing a lot of great moves, queen c1, and the pin on the bishop ends things a little bit faster than they might have ended a little earlier, queen to uh, e2, take a moment, see if you can find the million dollar move, uh, this is actually probably only about a hundred dollars because it's not that much money in chess. Uh, maybe, maybe a couple hundred dollar move. Could have been the last round, could have been a couple thousand dollar move. What's the move? What's the move? What's the move? F3 Resignsville Population Matthias. Um, point being here, there's no way to defend the bishop, and because F2 and D2 are defended by the bishop. Uh, so after Queen takes three, you've got Queen takes E1. Um, there's mate in one no matter what you do. Queen f1, you just, oh sorry, mate in two no matter what you do. Queen f1, queen takes f1, king h2, and queen 2 g1, checkmate. So, what did we learn from this game? We learned that a long buildup can be successful. Really, it was mainly thanks to the fact that uh, you had a, a roughly close position, you were able to create some threats. He had a nice position. And he didn't really go for an all-out attack until his pieces were ready to go for an all-out attack. It wasn't like he was playing g5 and h5 before the attack began, because at that point, white could have started a counterattack, you know, in the center or on the queen side. And then, while you're trying to develop your pieces, he's already created a lot of threats. While as, you know, just maneuvering your pieces around, he's not thinking you're attacking him. Um, and so... When he if, if he goes for a immediate opening of the queen side of the center, your pawn structure is still intact. You still got a safe king, um, and you'll be able to defend that side of the board as we saw with that rook a seven move. He was actually able if they opened it up to go on the offensive on that side. You know, so um, he stayed very very uh, flexible with his choice, and it paid off. Great dividends. Beating a twenty four hundred is always a good thing if you're a twenty four hundred or really anybody else. It's always a good thing you'd be a 2400. If you lose to a 2400, that may not be too bad if you're a 2000 like me. Uh, if you're 2800, yeah, that kind of sucks, but, you know, it's okay. Uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. Um, appreciate likes, love likes, and uh, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much. Have a good day.